now at Rocket Digital Summit, we are talking to Oleg Naumenko, Media and Communication Officer at Administration of the President of Ukraine. Hello, nice to meet you, Oleg. Hi there, thank you for having me and uh, being a partner of this conference. So uh, I want to talk to, to you about uh, digital communication and its tools uh, and uh, the differences uh, between uh, its usage in, in the West and yeah. uh, Eastern Europe. So which are the differences? Well, I think the key difference is the quality of the personnel who are doing digital communications. Right now, we're just realizing its importance and that uh, in order to be effective, especially for gov government institutions, it is not just enough to uh, write a press release, but also to deliver your point of view through different platforms and reach your audience. Currently, actually, I would say that some of the Eastern European nations, like uh, the Baltic states or even Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia, are ahead of some of the Western states in terms of uh, diversifying their approach and trying to reach the audience, because uh, we just experiment. We like to try new stuff, and there is no conventional traditions that are being based in here. So in time of crisis, which uh, uh, digital uh, tools do you use to communicate? Well, I personally work in the area of military communications, yeah, no. and as you know, the last two years have been some sort of a permanent crisis yeah. for us, and this is all a part of a white voice spoil policy uh, group uh, based uh, around the idea of digital communications. And obviously Facebook as the main political tool in our countries plays a crucial part. So it is essential for us to be very fast, very accurate, as opposed to some of the uh, other users who don't really have the same amount of credit given to them by the people, as well as using different uh, uh, social media platforms like Twitter. Uh, there is a growing uh, rate of people using Instagram and Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So all these services can be used productively by the state as well. So what is the impact on society? Of social media? Yeah. Well, we had a revolution just two years ago <laughs> thanks to one Facebook post. Yeah. So that just shows the scope and the scale of how things can escalate and uh, develop in uh, absolutely unpredictable things using social media. Right now, uh, it plays both a positive part and negative part because uh, we are as a country that suffers from the military invasion, face also the part of uh, information warfare used by uh, Russia and uh, its proxies in terms of providing the fabricated information. And for us, it's interesting to see how we can debunk that, but also to provide alternative narratives. So to show that the government is working, especially the military modernizes really quickly, both informationally and militarily. So uh, in the Ukraine-Russia conflict, we are uh, usually hearing the term propaganda. So why is this uh, uh, propagandistic information spread? So and uh, how it is spread and how efficient it is? Well, I think it's one of the most interesting parts of the conflict as such, because uh, uh, as opposed to the to the old days where there were two different views of the uh, of the world, capitalist and communist one. This one is much more sophisticated, and uh, as one of the researchers of uh, propaganda, Peter Pomeranz, have told, it's not the war of information, it's the war on information. In a way that you don't have to provide the vision that you want to promote, you want to create as much versions, as much noise around the truth, that the, the truth won't be distinguishable anymore. And uh, that is one of the key things we try to tackle, uh, both uh, with state services, but also with volunteer initiatives like StopFake.org or Ukraine Crisis Media Center. And uh, for us, well, it's a challenging uh, aspect, but also it's a very interesting aspect because if we succeed in that way, that will make not just our countries, but the entire region much stronger in a way how you verify information, how you use different tools to do that. Yeah, so how, how can we disseminate the information, the propagandistic information from real information? Well, I think uh, the easiest part is just yeah. to have your list of credible sources. Because uh, here you can see that there is a multitude of websites and uh, yeah. different uh, murky users trying to spread information that, that, are, that is not verified. But also, uh, digitally wise, there is an um, amazing book that uh, we have uh, helped to produce about verification of images and uh, a video of frames because uh, quite often we saw the pictures of some conflict and it turned out it wasn't in Ukraine but in Syria or it used to be part of the Chechen war. So being uh, uh, skillful in terms of uh, using Google Analytics and, uh, and also build up your network that will help you to uh, well, verify some of the images that you cannot say for certain whether they were taken in this place. 
so we are hearing about uh, the secret uh, child's army. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's, that, that's that one are of the working, interesting issues. Working for Kremlin and are posting on forums and social platforms different uh, pro-Kremlin yeah. messages. Yeah. So, yeah. is this an efficient uh, way to do propaganda? And how can we tackle? In some ways, it is very efficient. Uh, there was an article in New York Times about a fake uh, catastrophe in one of the uh, one of the factories in the United States, mm -hmm. and many many people shared the videos and the posts and statuses, believing that that was true, even though this factory never existed. So it just it shows you the scope. Uh, on the other hand, it's quite a like you know brute force because now, well, lots of. Uh, TV people mock these trolls because their comments are all the same. Their, the quality of their English is really poor. So in these ways, uh, it's it's very brute force. And the way how we can tackle that is not by creating alternative troll factories because that would be uh, even worse, but actually to provide more evocative and more interesting narratives. One of the speakers at the conference told that the key to sharing the content is to create emotionally. Um, something that you can rely on, something that can provoke emotions or good feelings that you have and reflect your views. And that is important for us to project our values and as well as the values of the entire European continent in the United States and the civilized world of the open and transparent government as well as society. So that's what we are trying to do as well. Uh, shouldn't propaganda be ruled by the law? Well, it's very hard to regulate so propaganda by the law because it evolves so quickly. And yeah. well, just a couple of years ago, we never heard of troll factories. Now there is such a phenomenon, and they can evolve uh, and become even ever more sophisticated. I think that uh, one of the most efficient ways to uh, tackle that is to unite around either civic initiatives or the public offices or private organizations that try to create a more balanced and more fair approach to information. That is done through journalism, objective and uh, well, very highly skilled journalism that we are still trying to learn from, as well as from civic initiatives that are uh, especially keen on to debunking the uh, um, fake and fabricated information. And this common effort will help to create a much more viable and democratic society. How is Ukraine fighting with uh, this propaganda? Well, one of the tools is one voice policy that we are part of, and uh, the difference with other public offices is that we sit in the open space and can exchange information really quickly and very efficiently, but also that is all relies on the fact that it, it is not vertical. Vertical integration doesn't work anymore. It's all about how you can talk to particular people from very different areas of expertise or profession, but they are opinion leaders or decision makers, and then the information can spread even more. And we found that th this is the most efficient way, both for military communications or for any others. And uh, we're trying to explore that as much as possible to create more um, balanced view of the government, as well as the uh, to tackle the uh, um, well parts of the hybrid warfare equation. Else. So I want to ask you about uh, the, the conflict in Ukraine. Is it an internal conflict, or are there involved any other forces, external forces? Well, it's definitely uh, the biggest external force is Russia as, as a state, because uh, even though one of the narratives that the uh, Russian information machine puts on is that the conflict is internal, just one, uh, one group of Ukrainians fighting against the other. Which is not true because uh, we, we had lots of domestic conflicts before. Do you have proofs of that? Sure, there, there, there are uh, photographs, uh, images, uh, videos, but most interestingly, there is a, a fantastic way how to identify that this particular Russian soldier has been at the Ukrainian soil, which is uh, geotagging. And you probably saw one of the news features by Vice News yeah. called Selfie Soldiers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where a bunch of Russian soldiers just put their pictures on in Instagram yeah, and other yeah, social yeah, media. I saw, I saw and you can see that they were in the territory of Ukraine, and this is still the case today. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think that the conflict will last? When it will be the end of it? I really hope it's going to be soon. <laughs> and then our main area would be not to cover what is happening in the East, but how the military changes. But uh, it's uh, all up to first the unity of Ukraine and the West, both informationally, uh, diplomatically, as well as militarily as well. Because uh, we have immense support 
uh, in terms of military assistance that we get from the West, even though it's no lethal assistance. Uh, but also, it's, it is very important to maintain the unity between the public, uh, the public offices and the people. And uh, information hygiene and the way how we treat information is crucial to that. Thank you a lot for the Thank interview. Thank you so much. Thank you.